Welcome to the Deep South, a place full of farms, small towns, and exceptionally slow drivers. I mean, really slow drivers. I headed out today to North Mississippi to go to Holly Springs National Forest in search of the ever elusive dogwood tree, or so I would find out. And this is really the kind of music I feel like people in North Mississippi would try to listen to when they're out doing everyday life. I could be wrong though. So I'm really just excited about spring. I, I've been kind of in this winter blues season of not really having much to shoot. We moved to a new place. So I didn't really know what areas were close to me or anything like that. So I've been kind of down in the dumps about my photography and like one of the things I love about spring is that it rejuvenates you and I've been watching a lot of the spring colors around me and especially dogwood trees around like the houses that are close to my apartment and they're just in full bloom like they're massive just booming white with little pink sections inside and I really wanted to come out and find some away from homes and so that's what I'm searching for today so I thought you know spring wildflowers dogwoods let's go to Mississippi never in my life did I ever think that I would be going to Mississippi to try to find dogwood blooms or wildflowers or anything like that however they are seeming to be quite elusive because I've been driving through Holly Springs National Forest now for about an hour and I've seen one dogwood tree. So I'm hiking this trail right now and just trying to like scope out anything that I can shoot. I'm totally walking and driving around blindly because I've never been here. I just wanted to get out and shoot something, like just do something in terms of getting outside and shooting. And sometimes that can be a major success and sometimes it can be an epic failure. So I have no idea how today is gonna go, but I hope it goes better than it's going right now. I continued my search through Holly Springs National Forest, watching the trees for any signs of dogwood blooms or spring life at all. But as I was watching the trees, you know, I'm also watching the ground. This is exceptionally good hiding spots for copperheads. And last thing I would do is want to step on one and get bit on my ankle. But something else caught my eye too. So while I'm watching up in the canopy and like around the tree trunks to see if we have any dogwoods blooming, it's always good to watch the ground as well. Cause like features like these are things that people just walk right by when really they could make some tremendous foreground features. They could be a shot of their own, a photo of their own when you have soft light over this landscape. Uh, right now you can't really shoot them very well because they're like reflecting the sunlight and they have just a lot of harsh light on them and shadows, but it's good to take note of things like this along the trail, getting up close to them without stepping on them actually and, and just getting to where you can photograph them. Again, using them as a nice foreground or in a photo themselves when you have a bunch together and really group those together and a nice macro shot or a small scene shot would be a really cool way to shoot these. So logging that away in my head if we come back and we have some soft light or some clouds. Because right now you can't really shoot them, but logging that away in my head. As I continue searching, I'm, I'm starting to think, is this whole search just futile? I mean, there's such harsh lighting all over the landscape. Will I even be able to shoot the dogwoods when I find them, or if I find them? And then some really interesting backlight caught my eye. So right behind me here is one reason why I love one way in, one way out trails, because we have a great example of something that I didn't see coming in. We have these tree trunks back here that are like these old southern pines and then we have new growth growing up around it and really budding during the spring and the spring leaves are backlit which means the light is coming from the back so it's really illuminating those so we have brights and shadows combined old and new combined creating a lot of contrast 
for our photography. So this is really actually pretty cool. Uh, just a simple shot. It's not really what I'm searching for today with dogwoods, but it's good to have one shot in the can before we head out and like maybe this day is a wash, but at least we have one photo to grab. So basically what I'm trying to do here is just frame this up to create a simple shot. So I'm gonna pull this up and create this composition where you have the tree trunk, but I'm gonna eliminate all this brush down at the bottom. I'm gonna point my lens up just a little bit and really seclude this trunk and the spring leaves. And then I'm gonna zoom in here. So right now I'm at about 150 millimeters to compress these distances between objects. So with 150 millimeter, I'm also at 1 1 25th of a second and F8, just keeping it really simple, trying to create some nice focus between these ranges. And then I'm gonna just take this photo. So cool shot, nothing huge or groundbreaking or anything like that. Just a cool, simple shot. You know, it screams spring. That's what I love about this shot is, is, is newness and rejuvenation. So cool shot to get along the trail. I decided this section of the park wasn't really working. So I packed up my bag and headed back to the car. And, and while I never think a photographic shoot is a disappointment because how lucky are we to get out and photograph amazing places and hike and explore. It's really fun to do. So it's never a disappointment. I am still kind of really bummed that I didn't find the dogwoods. So I was sure that there were going to be some dogwoods around here and be able to photograph compressing distance, telephoto lens, all that. But it looks like I've completely misjudged when the dogwoods are going to be here because there are literally none around me. I felt being further south as Mississippi is, the weather would be warmer down here for a longer period of time. Maybe they've had more rain or something like that, but there's just literally no sign of dogwood here. We did get that one shot, which was fine. It was cool. And it was really fun to be out hiking and scouting and just exploring. But I'm gonna head over to the other side of the park and really see if I can find something to shoot there. First, I'm gonna eat these carrots. Ever optimistic, I set out to the other side of the park in hopes of finding my elusive dogwood trees, but quickly realized that that may not happen. After several miles of just railroad tracks, I decided to make a detour. So overall, today's pretty unexpected day, and you may be wondering, how did we end up here? And honestly, I'm wondering the exact same thing. And such is the life of a landscape photographer. You never really know what's going to happen. You may set out for a certain thing and then it just doesn't work out and you have to quickly adapt. So I always say like explore, find, adapt and shoot. You always have to be working with what's given to you. And quite frankly, I'm on the edge of a highway here and we have like this classic scene in front of us that's just picturesque west tennessee and i wanted to stop here and shoot it because we have this really nice wetland marsh that's right in front of us and conditions aren't really working out for us either we're gonna have clouds coming in blocking the sunset that's going to be happening over there use photo pills to really scope this part out and see where the sunset was going to be it's going to be completely blocked by clouds so I'm going to have to adapt and just shoot this midday and try to just make the best of it. So here's the shot that I'm working with right now. And really, I'm just trying to eliminate the shore bank and trying to be sure that what I'm getting is only this block right here. Like we have some nice area over here and over here, but right in the middle is where we have the cypress trees and the lily pads. And that's really what I want to capture. So I'm going to try a couple different things here. Number one, what I'm going to try is just getting a solid, simple shot. And then I'm going to try to turn it vertical and shoot a pano going from side to side. Third, what I'm going to try to do is just kind of single out the lily pads and the roots of the cypress trees and get some detail shots too. So what I'm on here is I'm shooting at one two hundredth of a second because we have bright skies. Uh, I'm not even using a circular polarizer for this shot, which is a huge no-no. 
and then I'm at F16 ISO 100. Okay, so you may be wondering, why did I make this photo black and white? Well, the truth is, is because I hated it, and it was disgusting midday light. All right, so now I'm gonna go for the pano shot. What you wanna do is put your camera vertical and just be sure that it's completely level. Then you wanna free up your panning option on your tripod. And once that is loose, you can easily swing this from side to side without getting any jolts or getting your horizon line messed up. You can just pan this straight across. So I'm just gonna start over here. And then I'm gonna gently move over, shoot another one. And I'm just gonna repeat this process over and over. You don't wanna like lose any gaps here. You wanna overlap the frame a little bit so that your pano merge can be seamless. This pano actually turned out pretty cool. While the light isn't great, I still think the merge and the scene overall was pretty interesting for this shot. All right, now let's get out the telephoto. This is where the fun part happens. This is my favorite type of photography. Now, it was fun shooting these photos with a telephoto and trying to line up the lily pads with the cypress roots, really getting into the water and reflection and all that stuff. Do I think these photos are good? Well, no. In fact, I may open up a gallery and entitle all of these hot garbage because they're really not that good. This photo of the tree in the forest was pretty cool, but overall it was kind of a disappointing day for photos. It was still fun to get out and shoot. I would still encourage you to subscribe in hopes of maybe I'll take a photo one of these days that'll be worthy of your acceptance.